Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Airships Conquer the Skies with me, Lathrix. And of course, today, welcome to a few of the missions. Now, I remember doing some of these a very long time ago, so I've completely forgot about them. And we're going to see how many we can do in the next couple of hours. It's currently 11 p.m. I've just taken some sleeping medication because my insomnia is slowly destroying my mind. And let's see if we can destroy some things on the way. You know, all the healthy things you do to get to sleep. A meeting of scouts. Two Scoutland sheeps... <laughs> Scout ships meet? <laughs> yep, this is gonna go great. What you just heard, essentially, is what my dyslexia sounds like if I don't correct it before I say what I think I'm reading. Two scout ships meet. The enemy one is faster and more advanced, but yours has certain advantages too. Ooh. Interesting, so we can do a lot with these, but for now we'll just keep it as it is. I'm not sure if any of them make you make your own craft, but we'll see as we go. So, okay, instantly we have the enemy there. It has two cannons. Yeah, it's going to be nice and quick with that. What do we have? We have, oh, a lot of explosive stuff. We do have a fire point at least, and interesting. We're going to be able to give orders pretty quickly. So I think the advantage is we can hit from the top, since we also have grenades. And the enemy can't, so what we need to do is try and stay above it at all times. Yeah, we can give orders pretty quickly with this thing. Okay, wait until we drop our first bombs, then we see what it does. So this is pretty much how we win, isn't it? We just stay above the target and drop our grenades. I do like grenades. I wish I used them more. I really should use them more. Yeah, the enemy can't give orders very quickly at all. Whereas we can. Probably should have started moving with it then, honestly. Oh, the enemy can give orders pretty quickly. Should have flipped first there. That was my mistake. Okay. Come on, hit that engine already. The engine or the weapon shouldn't really speed up time. I'm not very good at this at the best of times. That'll definitely be good practice. There we go. Lovely. One weapon down. Both weapons down. And a victory for us. So that was number one. Done. Second, Assault on the Castle. Your glorious missile-equipped armada is about to encounter the cannon-equipped forces of, I cannot pronounce that, who will prevail. Have I already done all these? Is that why they're not unlocking it? Again, I did play this game, remember, multiple years ago. So there's a good chance I already did these, but I can't remember at all. Okay, so, what do we have? Wooden armor. We have three sets of regular rockets. We have... Three sets of ammo. No, it's two sets of ammo. That's quite far away from the ammo, but it does mean everything's quite isolated, so an explosion won't take out everything. That's fine. We do have some boarding. Um, no, they're just regular guards. Don't think we can really do any ranged boarding there. Okay, so I get what we are. The enemy is slightly better armoured than us, and it has two large cannons, and obviously there's an enemy down here, which is the castle itself. So lots of rifles, lots of cannons. So we need to get behind the enemy is what... The obvious thing is here. We need, to, we need to avoid those cannons. Can we move higher up? Straight away, that might actually get us out of the arc of fire of those cannons. So we're just going to go on past. That was annoying. I flipped just as the enemy started moving backwards. Oh, that was nice. Lots on the cannon there. So, already, we're not being hit by the cannons. Oh, yeah, those rifles have a really good um, arc of fire. So, stay as high up as possible to make sure they hit us as least as possible. I wonder if the cannons can even hit us from this high up. So, if I move like this, surely those cannons don't have a good enough arc of fire to hit us up here. So probably going behind the target isn't even the right choice. Just don't go in their arc of fire. So like, here? Just stay behind there. 
The enemy has a range and accuracy advantage, so staying close is only going to benefit us, really. There we go. Are these firing us yet? Okay, one of the cannons is a thing. But I'm still going to stay here, though. That no longer really has control. That's kind of annoying. I'm going to go after the castle itself now. This should be pretty simple. It does have rifles hitting us, but they're not all that much. But once this is out, it means we can then move freely. We are being hit by the cannon shots occasionally. We are seeing them go fast. But it is so far away, even the enemy with those large cannons is missing quite a few. Okay, that's that done. It can't control its movement now, so going directly above it means we are going to win and it won't be able to hit us. There we go. Nice and simple. Really should have done the missions before the campaign. Feel like it would have been a good uh, refresher course if nothing else. So that's two, and done. Boarding action. Why bring cannons when you can use your enemies? Okay, well straight away we have missiles heading towards us, so we need to move as soon as possible. Let's have a quick look see what the enemy are. So we have this one here with missiles. We have this down here with rifles and a couple of cannons. So what we're going to want to do then is capture them as soon as possible. Probably capture the missiles because we can probably hide up here and just bombard it. So let's make sure our things have moved though. Eh? Just avoid the explosions. And there we go. I wonder if we can just capture this. I mean, obviously that's not what they want us to do, but I'm tempted. No, let's, uh, let's make sure we, we do capture this, eh? Okay, we're currently boarding. And captured. Lovely. I'm gonna use these as rams, because I don't see any other purpose of them now. That was really easy, though. Maybe the option was to capture both of them separately. In fact, could I capture things with this? I don't know. This takes ages to give controls to. Eh, minor damage on there from the ramming. Actually, it did pretty well. Who needs to follow rules? We just ram things. There we are. Lovely. It's got a lot of its cannons. Though we're about to detonate. Just aimed fire. Don't know how much ammo you have. Oh, no. No, no. You have a full ammo store. Just... I think this is it. Realistically, what I should have done is moved above the enemy. And that's it. But... I forgot to do that, and we're just being silly, and we win. Still could move, but no, I'm, I'm going to defiantly just sit here. Nice and simple. The Keeper stood for hundreds of years, protected by fierce aerial warriors. Now, it is in your way. Dragon Rider Keep. Ooh. So there's the castle, then we have the dragon riders. Oh, we can add our own forces this time. Okay, I, me I vaguely remembered that. The Grand Derps would be awful here. They really would. These things are going to be too fast. They're long range. Honestly, these are going to shred most of the stuff we have. Um, one of our units of a flamer might be good. Or we could just swarm them. We could just swarm them. So the only units I can think of which might do decently is something like this, which we currently have. If this doesn't work, I might just make some new units for this mission. These are our grapes. So these are the ones with the grape shot cannons. The idea is these have a really good field of fire. So as they're attacking one, all the rest will be able to also fire away. So I'm hoping we just overwhelm them with how many shots we have. Like that. It has a lot of hits, but... Uh... You know what? I'm just going to move forward like this. If I flip, the other dragon's going to get us anyway. Okay, now once I get the order, I can flip again. Takes a long time for me to give these things orders. Ow! 
I was hoping. Oh, we actually did take, uh, take out two. I was about to just give up then because I thought, oh, no, this isn't working. But actually, it kind of was. There we go. Yeah, just overwhelm them with um, damage. Now, we can't really get over that enemy, so we're just going to have to do this. Oh, that swarm is so in the way of each other. Please, just win this. This is such a silly way to win, but it won. Yeah, not under command. Okay, so we won. And I honestly thought we'd lost then. I was just about to start again and be like, oh, okay, I'll make my own design. But nope, didn't need to. We'll move on. I mean, that was my own design, but you get the idea. New designs. Giant plant. Something terrible has taken root here. Yeah, I remember you. And I also remember that what we need to do is add something long range. This is where I think the Grand Derp might actually work out. Just trust, try and resist its movement and keep on firing. It's going to be static, so the torpedoes are going to be fantastic. Um, can I afford one of the frenzies? Okay, yeah, I can afford one of the basic frenzies. Just keep that far back as well, so if it grabs one of us... In fact, what I could do is sacrifice it, so it's grabbing this. and take, That'll take a while. All the, all the while, the Grand Derp can fire away. Probably shouldn't have uh, did that yet, because now I can't give an order. Please let me move. Let me give the order to me. Oh, it's actually trying. Never mind. Here's the torps. That's not going to take long at all to destroy, is it? But I mean, that was a distraction. Oh, already won. Yeah, that thing had no health. Um, so what won that was just the aerial torpedoes. Just ridiculous damage there from the Grand Derp. Really, the Grand Derp? Oh, God, I need to call it something else. I don't have to keep some, keep, just keep on saying Grand Derp. Its main strength is against static enemies like buildings and such. It has super long-range weapons which are accurate at that range. It does a lot of damage if, they t if the weapons actually hit, which they don't always hit against fast targets. It's just very good at that. Shellwalker. A monster's creation of bone, flesh, and metal. I was able to beat it with a fleet of 2,000. Can you match me? I don't know, uh, creator of this game. Can I? What the potatoes are you? Okay. Uh, friends is? Can't quite afford a fifth one. Uh, so you... I'll delete, and let's just edit one of the frenzies to be a little bit cheaper. I think Swarm might be the right option here, just because these Swarms have such a high amount of damage for their cost. Can I edit? Can I not edit in here? Do I have to actually go out of this mode? That's kind of annoying. Oh, in that case, Pyromaniac. Send in a little Bernie boy. Sure, let's just go with this so we can actually see what the enemy is. And then if it defeats us, we'll go and um, edit that design so we can afford the 2,000 a bit better. Oh my god, it opened up and it is firing from... I don't want to know what that is. That went down instantly. Wait, can we only fire when it's... I can't even move right now. Okay, so we can only hurt it when it's open. So what I need to do is what I did this time, but wait on all of our one-use things until it's open. Well, that's horrendous. Why do you exist in the way that you do? Okay, I'm going to try that again with exactly what I just had. Um, but I'm going to... This time, okay, so its attack, it seems, is completely accurate. So I'm going to wait until the enemy opens up, and then just loose all of these external rockets at once. Probably shouldn't be that close, what's going to happen is, uh, just, it's just not going to work. Sure, add a cannon boy as well. So what we should do... Oh, I didn't think it was actually open. I thought it was just an animation thing. Oh, well, I'm dumb. The idea was fire the, the large rocket as soon as it opens. I do think Swarm might be the idea, though. It just does so much damage. Hmm.
Well. So I was trying to see some kind of weapon which does a lot of damage for quite cheap, and the saw blades kind of have it. It's 30 damage five times per second if they're attacking the whole time. So if two of these, we should be able to do some good damage. Now, I'm hoping I'm not overthinking it, and it is just a matter of attacking the vulnerable section when it's open. Otherwise, we're just going to be wasting time doing this, but I think it is, so let's go with this. Okay, you're gonna get past, so... Okay, that's pretty perfect. There we are, all three. Ah, oh, I wish you hit one of the ones on the bottom, but that's fine. Oh, that's gonna be so much damage, though! I need to rethink this. Yeah, I thought it might work, but no. So I've tried a few more things, and I think where we're going wrong is having so few ships. Because it can only kill one at a time every time it opens, so ideally what we want is something which can keep on hitting it, and we can just swarm. So, probably going to go down the route of something which I normally don't. Maybe a land ship? Because you can make them a bit cheaper, I think. Maybe, but then what type of weapon, really? The missiles, I mean, maybe just a rocket. So just rocket, then just the very basics to be called a craft, have them all along the floor. This also means, of course, it can't be shot out of the air. Maybe something will survive after the first hit. We could even maybe use the swarms. The, um, oh, I do love these. I use them a lot. There we are. The planes. But they're quite expensive, so let's go with this first. Then, if that fails, the planes. I just realised, I'm almost certain the, pl the ply here is actually the planes and stuff, because I don't think it can hit planes. Actually, I don't know, can it? Well, okay, assuming it can't hit planes, even if it kills our ship, that plane will still be there attacking the enemy for a while. So our damage won't go down as we lose these. Well, I think one of them just fell straight through the floor there. Yeah, this isn't gonna work, is it? I can already- I've got that feeling of not working. I was thinking missiles are probably not the right option here. So I don't think missiles are the right idea. The reason is, they're not really designed for this. I mean, obviously, but even more so against this type of enemy because they don't actually do that much damage per hit. It's more that they do splash damage. That's why they're so deadly, because eventually they'll knock something important and just cause loads of chain reactions. 40 damage, 5 meters for 48. That's not really that high when you look at other things in comparison, especially for the cooldown. You reload a 4. So, they're not bad, obviously, even for that damage, but it's not the right thing. So, uh, yeah, let's give it a go with the, um, the planes and everything else, just because I haven't used them in a while. I don't know if that's a good idea. There's a good chance they can be shot down, but we'll see. If they can't be shot down, I think maybe that's a good idea. So we have... Well, loads of things here. The biplanes. The bombers. I don't really know... I don't really know these well enough to know... Does that do a lot of damage? I don't know. Does that do more damage? What weapons do they have? I'm not very knowledgeable in this. Okay, exceptionally good at shooting down other small aircraft. Obviously not. I mean, it fires bombs. Bombs are always good. These just have rifles, so that's probably not the way forwards. Ooh, a Torp Bomber. Ooh, now that's going to do a lot of damage. Oh. Before returning to rearm. That's probably not the best idea then, actually. So, probably just you, am I right? Ooh. That's interesting. Yeah, I need to go with this tech next time. So, make the craft as small as possible while still being a, a viable legal um, unit and just spam these, maybe? So, where's the basics we need? I think I messed up last time. So, let's have a quick look see what I just made. The bot fly. No, I think that is pretty much the basics, isn't it? You need crew, a weapon, you need tracks. You can't go in without tracks. I wish I could. Do I actually need the coal? No, yeah, I do need the coal. If you don't have the coal, it, it warns you about it. So, 
If we're using the plines, we don't need the ammo. So small coal, uh, small coal store, a berth, then weapons. Sorry, not weapons, then airships. If I can find you, thank you. Aircraft. I still don't know if that's right. Okay, yeah, let's go with this for now. <laughs> this is so dumb. Oh, it's still, still only... All right, still a bit too expensive. Oh, wait a second. Steel supply hatch. Swap that out for a wooden one. Is that going to be enough that I can just about get under 400? That'd be lovely if I could. No. That's really annoying. It's a really awkward amount. It's so annoying that it's just slightly over. That is infuriatingly annoying. Uh, I guess after that, just... Can we afford anything? Anything that does any damage? Sure, Pyromaniac. Okay, we're annoyingly off. Let's just see how this goes. Make sure these work in the way I hope they work. Yes, yeah, so these should keep on attacking even after the tank is dead, right? So we have those four just constantly bombarding. And that's going to be sustained damage even as they're all destroyed. But no, that's not going to work at all, is it? I am having real trouble with this. Turns out the legs are cheaper than the tracks, so let's give this a go. More planes in the air, more craft on the bottom. Okay, that was nice. A couple of times now, a lot of them have hit what's opened. If that actually does make a difference, I mean, you'd think it would, but I don't really know. How is it defeat? Oh, do they knock off the weapon? Oh, okay, I need to make them less close to each other. Let's try it again, then. Okay, so this time we're not allowing them all to stack up too much. I let them stack up last time, just because it meant the planes got there a little bit faster, but we did lose a couple of the weapons, and you can't have a craft without a weapon and still continue the fight. It simply doesn't count, and that's why you can't spawn in just um, distraction units without at least a weapon. That's why this little guy at the back has a tiny little rifle, which will totally help. So this time it should be... Yeah, it has to attack every last one of them, so it's a little bit more time for the bombs to do their damage. I think next I'll try ramming if this doesn't work, because I can't really see doing this tactic better with the 2,000 limit we have. I'm sure the limit used to be like 4,000 or so. Okay, so this is my last attempt using the planes. Cheapo here is, as far as I can tell, the cheapest unit you can make that's still legal for this mode. It has the plane, it has a supply hatch, it has one thing for the crew, has half a balloon for a lift, and the cheapest sail possible. It has the bare minimum crew to keep it going as well. That's it. So, let's see how this does. I'm going to pace them out a little bit more than usual, just because I have seen the enemy actually take out um, one of the planes with its attack, especially from enemies so low. Okay, this time no planes are destroyed. Took a little bit too long to get into combat, though, so... If this doesn't work, obviously the swarm planes at 2,000 is just not going to work. Oh, that must be so much damage. Yeah, out of ammo. I just won, and I wasn't recording because it's a version I've already tested out, I just wanted to see something. So this is what we won with, with the cheapos. Naturally the attempt I won I wouldn't be recording, because it's me, and that's just what I tend to do. Just got far luckier with the, um, the accuracy of the planes, that was it really, so there we go, that's it. Two of them survived, so that's how I managed to do the 2000 one. You know, now I think back to it and uh, how I used to beat some of the Mad Scientist designs in the past, years ago, I definitely used ramming vehicles, because ramming vehicles do so much damage to the point of impact, but it doesn't really spread all that much, but the damage is there. So when you hit something which has a combined health pool, which you can't destroy parts from, the damage is insane. But I'm so glad we won with this little thing. We have a sail. A wooden supply hatch and a berth. I have removed the armor. It only has wooden walls rather than the standard wooden armor. That makes it just under 250, so we can um, scale them better. And that is it. And then we, have to do, then we just have the back of a suspendium dust cap. So that's that. The cheapo design. Though I do kind of love the land ship version. Yeah, this is definitely cheaper since you don't need coal either. So the sail costs... Let's, let's have a quick look-see. So with lift, the... 
end cap is only 12, and then the smallest sail, which is that one, is only 20. Oh, there's a top sail. So I could have made it cheaper, but it's by such a small amount now, it doesn't really matter. The fact I got it under 250 meant that I could have eight of them, because of course the maximum is 2,000. But what I could have done then is just go remove that sail, add the top sail. So I could have actually made it slightly cheaper. Is that the cheapest form of propulsion? Because that doesn't actually count the four one there. So I could have made it very slightly cheaper, but it wouldn't have mattered. And that is how we beat the Shell Walker. Turns out it would have mattered. <laughs> I just uh, did one last check. I am going to have to call the video now, but we can have this. This counts as a true vehicle. Because it has a kinetic bomb, it still counts. Oh, wait, that looks more like an actual bomb than just a rock like it normally does. Does that get updated? Or is that just a different version? It doesn't matter this time. But yeah, with that, and then making the cheapos cheaper by using the smaller sail, we can still have eight of the cheapos. I'm going to throw them down. There we are. And then we could also have that one as a distraction to begin with. It wouldn't matter too much because these would eventually run out of ammo and have to come back, but it would at least allow them to always have their full duration, make it a bit less luck-driven. So that is the final version then. Don't know how I missed that sale. So this time we had the extra unit at the front to act as a distraction. Will I get a win again, please? So I have one just being recorded normally. There we go. Lovely. So with that, though, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. That took way longer than it needed to be, and it's just because of me misunderstanding things. Didn't really get to... Uh, try the ramming idea. Maybe I'll go back to that in the next video. But either way, next time we'll be doing Spider's Gorge, the Kraken, and the Trenches. And then I would like to do some building, just some building in the video, just so we can get better at designing a lot of the things. And then we're going to start making choices for our next full playthrough. I am still waiting for the big update to hit the game, though I might do one more full playthrough before then, because honestly, it was just loads of fun. And I'd like to play on maybe one higher difficulty, maybe focusing on land ships this time. I really do love the land ships. They're just not as good as airships in my opinion, but maybe I'll be proven wrong by doing a full campaign with them. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that airships conquer the skies as a series you wish to see continued in the future. So yeah, finishing off things in the next video, I'm having a lot of fun with this, and I hope you are too. Have a lovely day, do take care, this outro is too long, goodbye.